now give the floor to the representative of uh, Pakistan for your SMS. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The Pakistan delegation welcomes the opportunity to discuss the situation in the Middle East. We have listened carefully to the briefings by Under Secretary General Di Carlo and Assistant Secretary General Muller. Mr. President, the situation in the Middle East poses a grave threat to international peace and security. Even as old conflicts fester, new threats have emerged. In the region, strategic rivalry has assumed a sectarian hue. Competing and overlapping interests of regional and external powers threaten to erode the foundations of peace and stability in the region and beyond. Civilian populations, including women and children, have become the principal victims of protracted violence and instability. Mr. President, as recent developments in the Gulf region have demonstrated, the threat of dangerous escalation is never far off in this region. The region cannot afford another conflict. In the wake of the recent tensions between Iran and the United States, Pakistan has sought to defuse these tensions. On the personal initiative of Prime Minister Imran Khan, our Foreign Minister has undertaken visits to Tehran, Riyadh and Washington in the past few days. We have underscored the need for mutual restraint, including non-use of force and the recourse to dialogue for the settlement of all disputes. The positive reaction from all sides is encouraging. This could serve as a first step towards a broad-based regional engagement. Pakistan will continue to be a partner for peace in the region. Mr. President, there, there have also been diplomatic gains in other parts of the Middle East. Last week, the Security Council adopted Resolution 2505, renewing the mandate of the UN mission to support the Khodaida Agreement for another six months. This was a clear signal of the international community's commitment to a peaceful solution of the Yemen crisis. Full implementation of the agreement will provide the requisite momentum towards peace in that country. In Syria, the establishment of the Constitutional Committee has rekindled hopes of an inclusive political settlement. We echo calls by the UN Special Envoy for Syria that the committee needs to be nurtured and genuinely supported by the Syrian parties and the international stakeholders. The Berlin Conference on Libya must be followed by the fulfillment of the pledge by international powers to allow and enable space for a political reconciliation between the various factions in Libya. Mr. President, the tragedy of Palestine, which is at the heart of much of the turmoil in the Middle East, however, shows no signs of ending. As illegal Israeli settlements expand into the occupied Palestinian territory, the vision of a two-state solution is being systematically reduced into a one-state reality. Unilateral moves on the status of Jerusalem and Israeli settlements have further dimmed the prospect for peace. The United Nations, <clears throat> including the Security Council, have a central role in responding to these challenges. The elements of a comprehensive settlement are well known. The principle of land for peace and the implementation of Security Council Resolutions 242, 338, the Madrid Terms of Reference and the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002. The international community, Mr. President, must continue to promote the aim of creating, and I quote, a viable, democratic, sovereign, and contiguous Palestinian state living side by side with Israel in peace and security, unquote. I thank you, Mr. President.
I thank the representative of uh, Pakistan for his statement and